Banksy boasts that this underpass is London's dirtiest, darkest cinema. And what else would you expect from him? The grimy walls are the perfect canvas for the faceless street artist and those inspired by him. A red carpet painted on the pavement outside is the closest this gets to being mainstream. Although there is an ice cream kiosk of sorts. As for the drafty auditorium, well, it's like watching a film in a cave. The film is a documentary about the working relationship Banksy has with a Los Angeles-based graffiti artist, Thierry Guetta, and the lengths they go to to display their work. There's lots of footage, lots of covert footage of street artists doing their stuff and running away from the police, which is actually very exciting and really captures a, a moment in the 90s when this movement first began, uh, but it's also very, very funny. Terry's cousin was Space Invader. Reese Iffens narrates the film, and at points a heavily disguised Banksy himself comes out of the shadows, just. Most normal art is built to last like hundreds of years. It's cast in bronze or it's oil on canvas, but street art has a short lifespan, so it needed documenting. This isn't just a cinema, it's an art installation in itself and when the audiences watch the film they can hear the regular rumble of trains as they pass overhead on their way into London Waterloo. It would be distracting except of course it's all part of the experience. Banksy's success lies in his mystery and his social observations. The camera shy artist is a master of publicity. He is not known and yet he is super celebrity. He's street corner and yet he's highly commercial. And that kind of, it's like a massive paradox. And that's what people are so intrigued by, I think. Banksy hopes the film will encourage the audience to go out and express themselves. You can even buy cans of spray paint from the ushers. This is cinema, but not as Hollywood knows it. Alistair Bunkle, Sky News, South London.